You have irritable male syndrome. <laughs> Prepare to laugh your ass off and hopefully learn some information in the process. Today, we're back at it reacting to and breaking down some of the crazy medical type situations and injuries from one of your favorite shows, King of the Hill. Before we get into it, please do me a favor and smash that subscribe button. All right, let's dive right in. You remind me of this guy I killed. Whoa. Weapons. Dad, relax. It's just salt and pepper. Now sit down. A little flashback, a little PTSD. This definitely happens to uh, people who have been in combat or in bad accidents or just have bad experiences. You can have them replayed, getting therapy, discussing it, being able to figure out what the triggers are and what to do in these situations is probably the better treatment than just covering it up with the medication. Uh oh. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Dad. Oh, he's gonna hang up burns. Oh my gosh. Definitely gonna be second, third degree burn. There's clothes potentially are gonna be melted onto the skin. Bad situation. So first degree burns, like a sunburn. The skin's red, it hurts like heck. Two, there's two different levels, but that's typically when it blisters. The biggest thing is if you touch the skin underneath that it blanches. It goes from red to white, it means there's good blood supply. Three, it's like leather. You touch it, doesn't hurt, and it doesn't change color. And then four, it's basically below the subcutaneous tissues, and basically you got into fat, muscle, and even bone. What's wrong with him? What, are you serious? Okay, where to begin? He has severe burns, a broken hip, and torn ligaments in what I can only call his ankle knees or ankies. <laughs> it's like cankles, right? <laughs> So they're covering up the burns. People are like, what do we do for burns? It's really not much to do. They're wrapped because the tissue's open, so you're trying to prevent secondary infection. Then he's got a hip fracture. That needs to be repaired with hardware if you ever want to walk again. Plus he's extremely allergic to shellfish, which caused swelling and an infection in the esophagus. Oh, not to mention the four rusty bullets previously lodged in his chest cavity, one in his heart. Oh my he's gosh. Been worse. Okay, wait. So he has an infection from the shellfish. That doesn't make that much sense. He's got bullets left in him. What? Actually, that's very common. And this guy's got one lodged in his heart. So it's in the muscle. If you went after it and tried to cut it out, you're gonna cut open the heart and then you're gonna cause heart scar tissue. You can cause them to die. You actually leave bullets in the body. But majority of them actually are left in because you actually cause more damage than leaving them in over time. Well, it's only a matter of hours, maybe a day. I'm sorry, Mr. Hill. Well, I've got a shed to rebuild. See you later, Dad. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why are the monitors way off? So the, the doctor just told him that his dad potentially has got a day to live. Okay, he's got a lot going on, but none of them at the moment seem quite life-threatening. The heart rate is at the top. You see it's got the little spikes, but typically anywhere between 50 to 100. It's fine, give or take. It, it fluctuates, right? Below, see that waveform? That's a respiratory waveform. That should be anywhere between 10 and 20, 12 and 20 for an adult. Who came up with these numbers? I don't know. Oh, the gym. Okay, first off, wait a minute. Have you guys been to gyms where people are just shirtless working out? Like, why are you putting your nasty sweatiness on everything? Let's wear a shirt, collect your sweat, and then wipe things off. Like, you don't need to show off to everybody else. But if you want to see me do a workout video, I'll take my shirt off if you need me to take my shirt off. Ooh. What's gonna happen? I got a good story for you. Oh. Is he stuck? Oh my gosh, okay, before I even know what happened. That much weight, that much pressure, you can cause hemorrhoids, you can cause a rectal prolapse, you can literally have your butthole turn inside out and come out because you're pushing too hard. So what's the situation, doctor? Is it gonna be okay? Well, it's incredible. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. It is what it's looking at. Looking at? <laughs> but your rectum ruptured and, well, your internal systems became External. Told you! I, I don't make this stuff up. They don't make it up. It happens. Don't know about ruptures and tears. The supporting musculature in the pelvis, it's like shoop, envelope coming right out. I've had to put these back in for multiple different reasons why they have a prolapsed rectum. You wouldn't be able to see this on an x ray. He'll be fine. Don't lift such heavy weight. Well, except for being incurably ticklish, I'm 100% healthy. There's no such thing as incurable ticklish because. People are just ticklish or they're not ticklish. It's not something you can like fix or not fix. But shouldn't we be giving him maybe just a little testosterone just to top him off? You know, jumpstart that puberty? Yes, Mr. Hill. Testosterone can jumpstart puberty, but I don't give radical hormone therapy to young boys who happen to be mediocre at dodgeball. 
<laughs> Who doesn't like dodgeball? Very rarely do you give hormone therapy to kids unless they are severely off the growth chart. As we get older, sometimes men who have decreasing testosterone will take testosterone supplements. So the negative of having too little testosterone, decreased libido, you're tired, not as like defined muscles. Taking hormone therapy does increase your risk of potential blood clots and also different types of cancer. We can fix these things, but they're not without risk. Testosterone is most commonly prescribed to men in their 40s with irritable male syndrome or IMS. <laughs> irritable male syndrome? Like, I don't think that's a thing, but then again, we could just ask my wife. <laughs> She's gonna tell me it's equivalent to like menstrual period or something, or PMS, you know. It's the male equivalent of PMS. There's oh. a PMS for men? PMS for men due to low testosterone. You have irritable male syndrome. <laughs> what? I'm just stressed about my work. Well, the stress you're feeling at work could be a result of IMS. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Just think of it like you're having your menzies. <laughs> Not having maybe like monthly cycles, but could a man's testosterone affect the way that they're feeling 100%? Teenagers, kids who are going through puberty, their hormones are kicking up, they're changing, they're adjusting, and so you could have swings as well. Hank, I'm gonna write you a prescription for a low dosage testosterone supplement. Go ahead and try it for a few. I don't need testosterone. I just yep. need you two to get off my god dang back. But then again, the doctor now is giving him a prescription without even testing. He's like, oh, I'll just try it out. You need to do a regular checkup on Hank to make sure that there's nothing else that you're missing. And then if you want to try testosterone, you can. I wouldn't just write scripts like that. Oh my gosh, she's gonna sneak it in the food. Don't do that. That's like not legal. Dang it. Oh man, what if he's already taking it by himself without telling his wife now he's getting double the dose or can have an interaction with some other med that she may not know that he's taking. So it's super dangerous, don't do that. My symptoms include forgetfulness, repeating things, being told I'm crazy, oh, <laughs> repeating things. Repeating things, WebMDing it. Be careful when you do this. We get this out all the time. I looked it up on WebMD. I, you know, got scared, so I came in. But remember, everything on the internet is sensationalized, right? And everything is set to get you scared. So they're gonna give you the worst case scenario. It's more likely that it's more common of a medical ailment that you have versus something that's super rare. Please take our survey. What's wrong with me? Sponsored by Azteca Pharmaceutical. Oh, of course, pharmaceutical companies. You've successfully completed our survey. According to your answers, you have dementia. Oh, that's where I was going with it too. So feeling like you have symptoms of dementia, short-term memory is gone, but you can remember long-term stuff, misplacing your keys, and that just has to do with how the brain is functioning, frontal lobe issues of the brain. The only way to officially diagnose Alzheimer's and dementia is actually by autopsy. If you have signs of early dementia, getting on medications early is actually quite beneficial to slow the progression. But if you put it off too long, you're gonna cause more issues. So get it taken care of sooner than later. But stimulate your brain. Crossword puzzles, reading, things to just keep your brain functioning at a high level. I have dementia. Oh my. I know. Who knows where I caught it or how long I got it. <laughs> I love that they're talking about dementia. One, you don't catch it. More than likely it runs in families, but they're all drinking beers, which in itself causes short-term memory loss, right? A little bit of flag football. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh. What happened? The shoulder Why to the nose. Why are like that? Oh my God, I heard Hank. I broke his nose. Oh, nice. Well, they did a good depiction. But you already see there's a little bit of blood. And typically, if you have a nasal fracture, you actually break the bone in the middle, and then you can just have blood seep down in basically dependent areas of the face. Pretty good job, King of the Hill people. Reset his nose before the cartilage sticks. Do what you need to do, Clay Hammer. Just fix it so nice. we can get Straighten back to that practice. Nose. Someone get me two pencils and a rock. Two pencils no. and a rock. But wait, what? I got what? The on the field. What? Uh, hold him still. Here you can bite on this. Just shove it up his nose. On the count of three. Oh! <laughs> no! Oh. Holy cow, that's so messed up. Don't ever do that. Don't shove things up your nose, okay? And don't smash your friend's face with a rock. You grab the nose. And you put it back over where it's displaced. If we can't reset it right away in the emergency department, it'll be reset in a couple weeks when you follow up with the ear, nose, and throat doctor. Have a look through our nose book and pick out one that you like. I just want my nose back like it was. Hike, this is your chance to do something different. What? 
So his nose looks fine. It's just swollen. So if there's so much swelling, you typically wait until the swelling goes down. Let the nose be, let the swelling go down, see if it's straight or not, and then fix it thereafter if you need to. I just want my old nose. Your call. But uh, after I straighten out your nose, is there anything else you want me to change while I'm in there? <sighs> My left nostril. Our different sides are not equal. Well, that's how we're made. This happens with surgery sometimes. It's almost like when you take your car into the mechanic and you're like, hey, can you fix this? And while you're at it, there's something else going on. Doctors are basically the mechanics of the human body. This is hilarious. I really enjoyed it. They have really good medical clips. They do a halfway decent job relating to the medicine that's in there. I just was very upset about that monitor. If you guys like this, check out this playlist right here. I know you're gonna love it. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.